This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. We have authority to speak to trouble, problems, sickness. Have you spoken to it? Have you spoken to it? I still speak to my prostate. You are perfect. I speak to myself. You are perfect. I speak to lack. Lack, go in Jesus' name. You have no authority here. Renew your mind, your spirit. Renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, Michael T. Smith, Gregory Didow, and Andrew Womack. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Seats are limited, so register today. Look at Proverbs 4. Uh, I mentioned that verse 20 and uh, 24. Proverbs 4, verse 20 and 24. Now listen to what he says. Look, look at the advice here. It is, it is real. It is true. My son, attend to my what? Incline thy ears unto my say. 21. Let them words not depart from thine eyes. Keep them words in the midst of thy heart. 22, for they, those words, are life unto those that find them, and they, those words, are health to all their flesh. 23, keep thy heart or guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So he says something comes out of your heart. 24, put away from thee a forward mouth a perverse lips, a disobedient mouth, put far from thee. Look at what he said. Look at what he just said here. He said, he gave you the, he gave you how life operates here. He says, here's how life operates here. First of all, all of you who are humans, who were created by God, give your attention to my word. Okay, we just stop right there. You want to know what's wrong? Stop right there. Nobody giving attention to God's Word. You attend to everything else, but not God's Word. I tell you when you attend to God's Word, when you done tried everything the world got to offer, and then out of desperation, you go to God's Word. Attend. See, you, you're, you're hoping now. Attend to my words. Then he says, how do I attend? How do you attend to his word? He said, incline your ears to what he says, your eyes to what he says, your mouth to what he says. He described the law of receiving. Whatever goes through your eye gate, whatever goes through your ear gate, whatever comes out of your mouth in abundance is what you'll harvest in your life. What's going through your eye gate in abundance? What's going through your ear gate in abundance? What's going through your mouth in abundance? That's what you're going to harvest in life. Well, dog, pass. ain't nobody got time to do all of that. See, that's your problem. You're looking at this as your part-time religious activity instead of your life. This your life. This ain't no part-time religious activity. This your life. This is how you make your living. You're leaning on God. Somebody said, I trust God. It means to lean on him. You're leaning on God. You're leaning on him. I don't know where the money comes from, but I'm leaning on God. I don't know. The doctor said they ain't got no, no healing, but I, I'm leaning on God. My relationship look bad. I'm leaning on God. I'm, I'm leaning on him. I, that's all I got. Amen. 
But what's going through your eyes in abundance? What's going in through your, what's going through your ears in abundance? What's, what's going through your, coming out of your mouth in abundance? Well, that's your life. I guarantee you, I can take any life in here. Tell me where you are right now. And we backtrack. And I guarantee you, you are a harvest of what, has, what you've been spending time with. You are a harvest of what you have allowed to go through your eye gate, your ears, and come out of your mouth. And you know what he said? He said the Word of God will impact even your health. He said the Word is health. It's health to your physical body. Oh, if I ask the number of people who got healed, and the only explanation you have is the Word of God, the Word healed you. Lift your hands up. The Word, the word healed you. It, so if the Word can heal you, it can deliver you, it can prosper you, it can give you joy. <clears throat> well, it's just a book. This book is alive. It's the living Word of God. Whoo, glory to God. It's the rhema Word of God, the logos Word of God. It's filled with life. Mm. And so you are not always in control of your circumstances, but you are always in control of your heart. You're not always in control of your circumstances. Stuff happens. Unexpected stuff happened. But you are always in control of your heart. Say that. I am always in control of my heart. So you have to choose to allow the circumstances into your heart. You have to choose that. They, they can't force them way in. You have to choose to allow the circumstance in your heart. If, it, if, it, if, it, if a circumstance is in your heart from some situation, you allowed it in. You have to choose. It's just like a fence. To be honest with you, nobody can really offend you. You have to choose to be offended. People can do stupid stuff, but you still have to choose to be offended by the stupid. Just because stupid show up doesn't mean stupid is invited in. And that's why stupid ain't came in your house yet. What we choose to believe is what determines what we allow into our hearts. Mm. What I choose to believe is what I, I determine through what I've chosen to believe. What I believe is allowed in my heart. What my belief, the thing that I believe is what's allowed in my heart. The thing I believe is what's allowed in my heart. Look at this society today. Look at the things people have chosen to believe. That's in their heart. Eventually, it'll be their life. They've chosen to believe it. It's in their heart. Eventually, it'll be their life. My God, what are some of the devilish things that you've chosen to believe? And it's not in God's Word. You can cancel it today, because if not, eventually, that'll be your life. That'll be your life. I don't believe God can heal nobody. That will be your life. We will celebrate you in a box. That'll be your life, because nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Oh, well, Brother Dollar, there's some things that happen that we don't understand. Yes, there's some things that happen that we don't understand. You got lots of questions before God. But at the same time, I am just not with you all the time. People have perfected phoniness so much, they can say one thing and believe another. See, that's the thing about it. You can go around all day long. Oh, I praise the Lord. Oh, he's awesome. He's a, and don't even believe nothing you just said. And unfortunately, I ain't in your heart, excuse my English, but I can't judge what you believe. I just only can hear what you said. And sometimes you don't believe what you say. <laughs> what did this uh, friend of ours go home be with the Lord, Charles Capps, used to say, uh, uh, you, can, you can have what you say, but you keep saying what you have. And that's interesting. I, I don't know that. I, I'm not around you when somebody do something to you, and then when you're by yourself, you cuss them out. 
But what you choose to believe, it gets in your heart. So your heart condition is based on your belief condition, and then it'll become your life. So what we choose to believe is what determines what we allow into our hearts. Depression cannot stay if you are holding on to God's Word and His promises. It can't. I'm a witness. It can not. I am a witness. It can not stay. When depression tried to wipe me out, it was God's Word we held on to. My wife is a witness. It was, I, it was that Word. I carried this little book that had all these confessions in it, and it was God's Word. It cannot stay if God's Word is there. And you keep bombarding it with the Word of God, it cannot stay. It'll try to grip on, but you're like, no, I'm going to get the Word. When I don't feel like it, I'm going to get the Word. Praise God. Bless His holy name. Say this with me. Depression cannot stay. If you are holding on to God's Word and God's promises, it can't stay. So if you allow the trouble around you to get inside you, its seed will produce a harvest. And therefore, you, you must make a decision to not let your heart be troubled. You must make a decision to not let your heart be troubled. How? Well, step number two. Step number two, speak to your problem rather than speaking about your problem. Speak to it and not about it. You know, the Bible talks about speaking to your mouth and not about it. You ever met those folks who just talk about their problem all the time? They hadn't spoken, they hadn't spoken to it, they just talk about it. Well, you know, the doctor said, and then they sent me to a specialist, and, you know, he said, and then I had to get on the MRI, get on that, that machine by about, another, by about two hours, and, you know, the report's supposed to be out. And you, you, you keep talking about your problem instead of talking to your problem. What's the difference? When you talk to it, you've released authority over it. In other words, you flip the switch. You, you don't talk to your problem. I'll tell you another thing we do. We talk to God about our problems. Oh, my gosh. We, f we fall down on our bended knees, and we talk to God about how hard it is. It's so hard, Jesus. You know, Lord. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Anyway, look at Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. Listen to what he says here. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, say out loud, I'm a whosoever, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, representing those problems, be thou removed. Say to the mountain. She's speaking to the mountain. Be thou removed. That's what you speak to the mountain of depression, to the mountain of financial uh, difficulty. You speak to the mountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, but you shall believe in your heart, that those things which he saith shall come to pass. I believe that what the Word says shall come to pass. If you believe that, he says, then whatsoever he saith, he shall have. How many of you believe that? So it's time, it's time to attack depression. Depression's in your life. Speak to it, not about it. Speak to it. Man, you should make $150 an hour just listening to people talk about their problems. They got to speak to it. You speak to your problem. Well, what if your problem, your husband, speak to it? <laughs> and then the Lord might speak to you and say, no, use the problem. <laughs> wherever the problem, wherever you locate the problem by the end of the day, speak to it. Tell it to be thou removed. Now, this is a, uh, a one-way conversation you must have with depression. And, and, and this, this thing that's weighing you down in your heart, you got to speak to it, not about it. Speak to it. Now, think, think about this now. When was the, the issue that you're dealing with, the issue you came here dealing with today? Here's a question. Have you spoken to it? I forget one day I was going through something and the Lord says, son, you hadn't spoke to it. And sometimes you let those powerful, yet the simple but powerful truths, they slip. The Bible says, be careful that we don't let it slip. 
Have we let that part of it slip? That's a part of our authority. We have authority to speak to trouble, problems, sickness. Have you spoken to it? Have you spoken to it? I still speak to my prostate. You are perfect. I speak to myself. You are perfect. I speak to lack. Lack, go in Jesus' name. You have no authority here. I speak to demon spirits that try to, to mess with my friends and relatives. Devil, I speak to you. You cease in your maneuvers against them right now in the name of Jesus. Their will of God will be fulfilled in their life, and they will serve God perfectly in the name to it. Speak to it. Oh, oh, now I know why you don't speak to it. Oh, you don't believe. The doggone believers ain't believing. Speak to it. Speak to it. On your way home, speak to it. Every time the pain show up, speak to it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't you sit there in silence while trouble and plans of the devil try to wreck you up. You open your mouth. There's something so awesome about a spirit filled, born again, baptized. Holy Ghost filled believer opening your mouth and speaking to the mountain. The devil has no defense. There's no defense against a spirit filled believer that opens his mouth up and speaks his faith out. Depression, you get out of here in the name of Jesus. You will not ruin my life. You are the enemy to my success, and I'll not have it. So I cast you in the hogs, dogs, elephants, whatever you got to go. You ain't stand here. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody shout, I believe. I believe. Number three. Number three. If there is something missing in your life, if there is something missing in your life, ask God for it. Somebody said, what? You're depressed because of something? What's the something that's depressing you? Have you asked God? Think about the stuff we let happen when all of this authority has been given to us. Look at John 16, 24. John 16, 24 says, <laughs> Hitherto, up until this time, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask, and you shall receive. Why? So your jaw can be full. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He gives us a key to being free from depression. Receive what you ask for, and joy will come. Receive what you ask for, and joy will come. I can't make it no simpler than that. First of all, speak to your mountain, and then what is missing? Ask for it. Ask for it. Now, be careful, be careful that you're not asking for what you think will bring you joy. Lord, if you just give me a 6'5 man, then I can have some joy. <laughs> Lord, give me a woman with some shown up curls. <laughs> Curves. <laughs> and I can have some joy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <sighs> joy comes from what you know from God. Ask for it. I am always surprised the number of people who are suffering depression and they have not, as Christian people, taken the time to operate in a wonderful, wonderful gift and authority that God has given to ask and you shall receive. Now, that's the part, ask and receive. But now your asking is based on grace. Remember now, grace is the boundary where your asking is concerned. Lord, thank you for bringing this up. 
You see, grace makes, faith takes. But faith can't take what grace had made. So if you're asking for something outside of the boundaries of what Jesus has made available, then faith can't take it. And that's what happened with a lot of folks. But I asked God for this, but it never did happen. You're asking for something that was not within the boundaries of grace. For example, one lady was asking for Gloria Copeland's husband, Kenny. <laughs> and she called herself using her faith, set up a mock wedding and everything, pretended that Kenneth was on the other side. How, you, how many of you know grace didn't make that? <laughs> so faith can't take that. You got to be careful also that your asking is not within the circle of self-centeredness. Are you always asking God for stuff that's going to give you the advantage, or are you asking God to help you to give somebody else the advantage, and then it'll boomerang back to you? I hear this all the time. Well, you know, I asked, but didn't nothing happen. And you don't even examine the whole situation. Your asking might have been wrong. Your motives might have been wrong. You might have continued to be a blessing blocker. There are things that you were doing that kept blocking stuff from coming in. Pride was there, so grace couldn't flow. There are all kinds of reasons why. And the problem was is that you probably didn't know enough to be able to do what needed to be done. Well, is it that difficult? It, it really isn't. He said, up to now you hadn't asked me anything in my name. Or here's your authority here. Ask and you shall receive. So what's within the realm of, his, of the authority that God has given you? Ask. Certainly, freedom from depression is there. Certainly, deliverance from sickness and disease in your physical body is there. Certainly, your needs being met and, and so forth, it's there. Certainly, having right relationships and all that stuff is there. Lord, I ask you to make me a millionaire. I don't know about all that. <laughs> but I know that God will provide everything that you need, whether it's with money or whether it's with favor. You follow what I'm saying? The things that I know that are there, the things that I know exist that are there, how consistent are you willing to be to receive what you ask for by faith so that your joy can be full? So every time depression comes up, my, my depression issue didn't stop the first time I said the word. That's the fantasy some Christians have. This isn't magic. This isn't abracadabra. <laughs> Every time that thing came up, I put the word on it. And I can't tell you how many times it came up. Depression come up, I'd respond with the word. Then it come up again, and i respond to the word. Sometimes it, it, was, it started off, that fight started off every 15 minutes. I'd make all these confessions, then it come back in 15 minutes. And I said, all right, come on, make some more confessions. It come back in another 15 minutes. I'm all right, okay, so this is the good fight of faith. See, Christians want stuff without a fight. Turn, turn your neighbor and say, get your fight back. <laughs> See, when you really believe something, you're going to fight for what you believe. I said, when you really believe it, you're going to fight for what you believe. If you can get talked out of it after the first round, I mean, even in boxing, they have, what, 12 rounds? Has that changed too? But it used to be, I think. But you, you, you got to be ready, be ready to go to the rounds. And then I remember it slowed up. It, 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 you know, 30 minutes gave me a little break. Then the depression came back every hour. I had to be ready to fight. And then I remember coming to Taffy with tears in my eyes. I said, baby, help me. She said, all I know to do, I never realized how prophetic this was and until recently. All I know to do is to tell you to do what you know to do. And all I knew to do was to get in that word. And then a couple of hours would go by, keep that word. Then I have a good day, stay with that word. Then the day come back and it felt like depression was there again. Stay that word. Just stick with that word. Stick with that word. See, not even farmers sow seed today and expect to harvest it the next day. There's a stalk time. Hallelujah. That might be the longest, most frustrating time, but that's the time where you put your fight up. That's the time where you say, I will not quit. I will not give up. That's the time where you're crying. You don't know what's happening, but you believe God. That's all you got. That's why I'm glad I've eliminated all the other options in my life, and I don't have no choose A, B, C, and D. I ain't got no multiple choice. I got one choice. I 
choose Jesus! In a world full of uncertainty and in the midst of unprecedented global events, the pressures of life can be overwhelming and lead to internal depression. But Christ has called us to overcome and win our internal and external battles. That's why we have designed a series just for you. You don't have to choose depression. You can choose your authority over depression and use your faith to defeat it and keep it out of your life. When you know how to properly divide the word, you know how to properly use the word. During these challenging times, boost your faith and fight the good fight against depression, anxiety, and fear with the five message series delivered from depression for just $30. Also available in this one-time offer is the Delivered from Depression series bundled with the powerful classic book, Winning in Troubled Times. Receive this $50 power pack for just $40 US dollars. Call today or visit the website on the screen to order. Renew your mind, your spirit, renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar. You gotta have your own relationship with Jesus. Taffy Dollar. I receive the gift of grace. Michael T. Smith. Let me give you news, you are not in the flesh. Gregory Dittow. It's the equalizer of every human being. And Andrew Womack. Being sensitive to the Lord can change your life. Your life will never be the same again. It's changed your mind, heart open. It's just life-changing experience can't miss it. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, July 6th through the 10th. Register by texting Grace Life to 51555 or visiting creflodollarministries.org. Seats are limited, so register today. Do you have a burning desire to see lives changed by the gospel of grace? If so, prayerfully consider supporting Creflo Dollar Ministries financially. You may not be called to preach in a pulpit or perform missions work in another country, but you assist those who are called to do these things each time you give financial gifts to this ministry. God bless you, and I'll see you next time right here on Changing Your World. When you make financial donations to Creflo Dollar Ministries, those resources are distributed immediately where you requested. If you do not designate your contribution, rest assured it is used for one of our many outreach endeavors. We are eternally grateful for your faithful financial support. Your generosity allows us to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.